Greetings, mortals, and welcome to the Broken Pact, the mythic odysseys of Theros show on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I am your dungeon master, or should I say your Therosian chorus, Ruben Bressler. And these heroes are my players. Uh, we can't start with Jordan this week, unfortunately, uh, because Jordan is very busy at the office, but uh, we still have three wonderful adventurers. Hey everybody, I am Riley Silverman and I play Safia. Safia is a native of the Plain of Theros. She is a devout worshiper of Thassa and she is a Tempest cleric. And I used a Triton build, uh, taking advantage of the legacy options that you can find in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything to kind of mess with my, my origins a little bit, customized origin ideas, but she's she's a Triton and she is Nyxborn and she likes to dance. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, hi, I'm Danielle Radford. I play Lydia. Lydia is a sailor. Lydia is a swashbuckler rogue human. Um, Lydia worships Thassa, but in a way that uh, maybe Thassa is a little uncomfortable with. We'll figure that out. Um, very sweet, dumb as rocks. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Ashlyn Rose. I play a Luxodon cleric from Ravnica who has found her way onto Theros and is, you know, enjoying life, exploring this new plane where no one looks like her, at least as far as she's found yet. Who knows? There may be another traveler here. We don't know. Uh, and she is a happy go lucky, here to support all of her friends along the way and learning about life and just experiencing her journey through it. So yeah. Oh, and her name is Tuturu. <laughs> so we almost we almost didn't get there. Yeah. <laughs> Writing down another Loxodon on Theros question mark. We'll just save that for later. Yeah. Um, we are using the Mythic Odysseys of Theros book uh, released by Dungeons & Dragons. You can get these at your friendly local game store. Support your friendly local game store. We are also sponsored. We're so lucky to have sponsors this season. Uh, we have two of them. Uh, first up is Hero Forge. Hey, everybody. Do you want to make customized minis with full color options and loads of customization, just like things like combat wheelchairs to banners of war for your characters? Well, you can do all that and more using Hero Forge's Hero Creator System. So check out HeroForge.com for more info or into the chat command exclamation point Hero Forge. And if you want to see just how easy it is to create your own Hero Forge mini, I've done quite a few myself. You can see I've got some characters of mine that sit by my desk and sometimes I make them fight, sometimes I make them make out, whatever. Um, I made a really cool fun one for Safia that is on the way to me right now. And I made a little video showing you how to do it. So check out the feed on uh, Saving Throws Twitter as well as the Discord. And you too can learn how easy it is to forge your hero with Hero Forge. Wow. That is an excellent. That's where the name comes from. Awesome. <laughs> and we're also lucky to have Die Hard Dice. Absolutely. And you can check out fr our friends at Die Hard Dice where you can save. 10% by using the code natural20 because what other code is not the best and use it at checkout use command exclamation mark d h dice in chat for links and info to die hard dice and the code natural20 only works until the end of this month so if you haven't used it yet get on it now and uh you can order one of our friends cb's dice set from there if you want or many others there are so many die sets on there from many of the well-known influencers on here on our channel and much more if you want to go check them out and get 10 percent off while you're at it so if you like helping friends and you like really cool dice use natural 20 at checkout at die hard dice i like both awesome. those things <laughs> those, are, those are i like all of these things i like hero forge i like die hard dice i like friends I like do you like D &D. podcasts i like podcasts as well hey <laughs> Flawless segue. Everyone watching us on YouTube or listening to us as a podcast, thank you so much. Uh, but please also do us a solid and leave us a like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine yards. It really helps the show and the channel as a whole. And speaking of helping the channel, Saving Throw Show, join our Patreon now. 
and be a part of the new Exploration Society. Your support comes with many rewards like special pins, swag, merch discounts, one page adventures, and more. So be a part of the society and join today. And with that, I just got my new society t shirt that came in the mail. I, I, oh. I bought one of the new the new logo shirts nice. on, our, nice. on the C Public page and I wore it yesterday. So very excellent. I don't have any of the new t shirts yet. I still got the, the old saving throw with the pencil. Oh, I gotta get a nice. new one. Yeah. Um, and with that, I do think that we are going to dive in, literally and figuratively, to tonight's episode of The Broken Pact. Episode nine, Swimmer in Nightmares. When last we left our heroes, they'd been contacted by Solea, Sophia's Nyx-born child, that Sophia's other child, her Triton son Odexes, and Odexes' father, Prince Palamon, may be in danger. I made a handy-dandy family tree for all of you to uh, look at if you're getting lost in the, uh, in the family reunion here. Um, they made haste, quickly jumping from the dream realm of Nyx to the material plane, damaging the moray a bit in the process, but thanks to some quick thinking on control water, a bit of marvelous pigment painting, and good old-fashioned elbow grease, they emerged mostly unscathed. The party then traveled to a nearby island and met with Solea's other mother, the sea witch Alestre who occasionally turns would-be thieves into pigs as punishment, but we'll let that slide, at least for now. Dream visions of danger beneath the waves signaled that forces reporting to Erebos, the god of the dead, were to blame, and that the prince and his son, Sophia's family, are in danger. Now the party makes haste to Chalcis, the Triton city, a day's journey away and a thousand feet below the ocean's surface. And that is where we're going to pick up our action. Before you leave uh, the island, Alestre will cast Water Breathing uh, on uh, Astarok and Tutru um, using the magnification device, the, um, the, the, mag what's the, the Professor Xavier helmet, um, and let you breathe water for the next three days. Mm. So you oh. don't have to worry about that. Yes, sweet. Awesome. Nice. Uh, and you know I, I the direction. I think at some point during the journey, I think I might use control water because it allows you to create like a cube of water or move a cube of water into a space. Mm -hmm. I think I might give like quick swimming lessons to Tuturu and Astarok as the boat moves. I put like basically building a pool on the deck of the boat <laughs> using yes. control water to give them like a little bit of time they can like swim around and play with and like move the water back off the boat when it's done. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. adorable. I love it. Oh, that sounds uh, great. I'm going to use my uh, pigments while we're doing that just to make them little floaties. <laughs> yes! Now, do you want the floaties to function as floaties? No, I just like them because I think they oh, look okay. cute. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, otherwise, it would defeat the purpose of learning how to swim. Kind of, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I um, think they're cute. You will, you will note that while taking swimming lessons on your way, your speed is halved because you do not have a swim speed. Those of you that don't have a swim speed, I should say, your speed is halved. And ranged weapons are not as good underwater. Um, if you want to look up water combat, uh, then you can take a look at all that. But you're on your way. Anything else you want to do before you arrive? 
Um, yeah, I think I think we would have prepared. We prepare spells. Um, yeah, make sure everybody's spells are uh, prepared. You did get a long rest. Anything that requires charges, um, just go ahead and recharge it up to full. Uh, since we're coming to the end of the season. Um, and you can make your way to the location that your locate spell found. As you arrive there... Are, are Sophia and... Sophia, Lydia, are either of you familiar with this city? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit familiar, yeah. Just, just a, a little bit. Oh, okay. You've been here? There? Yeah, it's where my son lives. Um, and so that's oh. where I, I'm, me and his father met and made a son. Oh, oh got, got it. Yeah, yeah. that. Okay. I don't know if, you've, if, if Radnica has like a birds and bees talk, but. Yeah, typically. no, we're good. Okay. Yeah, okay. we got you there. I, yeah. I, I just wanted to, I've never, I, the whole water concept is very new to Astarok and myself. And so I was just curious, like having a city underwater, like is the city underwater or is there air in the city underwater or no, how does that work? It's, it's less underwater and more in the water. Like it's not like a under, it's like, have you ever do you have like an underworld where you come from, like a like an under a world that's under the world? Yeah, a Gol we have the Golgari ruins, which is like the under city. Okay, um, I don't know what that means, but I'm going to assume that it's similar enough to what I'm saying, which is imagine that, but full of water, and then all the people who live there can breathe water, like fish. Mm -hmm. Okay, but not but like people. Okay. Like I can breathe water like fish person. I am like I'm actually kind of part fish person. Right. And Lydia has magic and you have magic now too. Okay. Um, and like my 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 baby daddy uh is completely fish person. They're called tritons here. I'm actually being kind of rude by calling them fish people. Um and then my son is is like he's got like my bits of Triton and then like his dad's bits of Triton and like enough Triton that like like most Tritons just think of him as a Triton. They don't go like oh it's a Triton. They I'm not <laughs> most popular in, in Calcus. Um Okay. Kind of a kind of a um I had fun when I was in Calcus. Uh and I and and me and 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 uh yeah. Um should be a good time. Ah, got it. So, you, so you were a little bit of a, a rebel. Yeah, um, I'm not from because like, my whole thing is like adventuring and and going from place to place and and seeking new skies and horizons and excitement and stuff like that. And royal families aren't big fans of that. And uh, and like they're like really big about like traditions and and like arranged marriages and 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 like histories and things like that so like a cool sassy adventurer comes blowing through and has like a whirlwind romance with like their their heir to the throne they are oh 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 oh, oh, oh. I tend to frown on it but uh they're cool they're cool to a nexus like they're like they're like they don't hold it's not like a sins of the mother kind of thing they seem they seem they just kind of prefer that i not get that involved in his reign. He's also like an adult now. Like yeah, he can do yeah. his own thing, but I think they okay. kind of, yeah, they kind of, they raised him. So they, they put a lot of thoughts about me in his head and oh. I don't blame them, but you know, kind of hurts sometimes, but he's still my son and loves me, but I think maybe like his grandparents and them might've yeah. talked to him. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't like Ooh. that at all. Oh, hey, uh, Astarok comes out of the swimming pool that you've built on the ship. <laughs> this is my Astarok impression, everybody. Uh, I don't, uh, is it, uh, it feels, I mean, is it, it feels like it's really far down. Is it kind of like, I don't, is it like flying because the floor of the ocean is so far? Because I'm not too um, big. Uh, it's more like sinking than flying. Um, that's better, I think. Okay, and he'll go back to practicing swimming. Okay. Lydia, you're steering, right? Yes. Um, you hear 
over your shoulder while swimming lessons are happening more centrally on the deck. Uh, singing. You hear as you're approaching the location. You're not. You're you're almost there, but you hear just over your shoulder. Um. Oh, death. Oh, death. Oh, death. Won't you tide me over another year? What is this? Lydia starts to look around and looks back behind her. Uh, sitting on the stern of the ship is a siren playing a lyre. Oh, uh, hi. I'm Lydia, and Lydia goes up to shake her hand. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, why are you uh, hanging out on the, on, on the boat here? And what's your name? My name's not important. I'm just here to watch. To watch what? This. You shook her hand, right? I did. Okay. Go ahead and make an intelligence saving throw for me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, where are you at? Intelligence. There we go. I'll be asking that again when we get the roll. Oh, 13. That's the number you needed. <laughs> um, you managed to avoid getting stupefied. Um, well, and I'm she will. There, so. <laughs> and she will. A prayer. Sorry. <laughs> you will. Uh, I will go ahead and make this uh, visible to everybody on the map. Um, and she is sitting there, and she'll keep singing. Now, With my what passive, is this? how long before I actually notice this happening? Uh, you would probably, you're pretty close. You're only about 30 feet, 20, 30 feet away. You would probably notice at this point. Uh, it is higher up because you have sort of like a back of the ship where the, or back of the boat where the, yeah. the, the steering wheel is. So you can't see it, but you can certainly hear it. Yeah, as they, as somebody singing in my boat feels like something that I would notice. That's why I, I want to make sure because my passive is pretty high, so. And okay. and Tuturu, you would notice as well. At this okay. Astarok is busy swimming. <laughs> we will say that he's busy swimming for this this combat. This is oh. about to happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> or avoided one of the two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're just uh, sitting here watching stuff, huh? What's that like? Just, I'm just sitting here observing. Okay. And distracting. Distracting from what? this yeah the you're... second she says distracting i my head's on a swivel i'm looking uh -huh. around for what what she's distracting us from sure I let, let uh, lydia keep role playing with her i'm letting you know what's happening with me while it's happening sure go ahead and make a perception check for me okay i don't want to interrupt what's happening with lydia i just i'm letting you know the second somebody says i'm distracting uh, heads on a swivel that's 100 percent yep. happening. so you oh. can look around distracting from what what's going on Oh, I don't want to be here when it happens. Okay, as soon as she says that, can Tuchu attempt to cast something? You may. Uh, Tuchu will say, well, I don't think that's very fair. And she casts Hold Person. Hold Person. I don't know uh, if the siren's a humanoid, yeah, but I will not, try. Not a person. Well, she doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will... I'll let it slide, though. Uh... The siren... Well, I mean, it's fine if it doesn't work. Two yeah. just wouldn't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it does not. It does not work. Uh, and huh. the siren will use an action to disengage. No. Oh. And fly off the edge of the ship, oh. as uh, and and float about ten feet off the edge of the ship. Um, okay. Goodbye. Rude. And. Uh, Sophia, looking around, you see, quickly closing in on your position, uh, six giant seahorses with returned on their backs. 
one of the returned is wielding a massive sword. Another of the returned looks like it's getting ready to cast something. Everybody roll for initiative. Okay, um, just to, real quickly, because you had me roll a perception check. Yes. And I rolled a 25. Oh, geez. Yeah, you would have you would have seen them coming from a mile away. Like, do I have like, any opportunity to fire off like one one quick round before they Absolutely. get here? Absolutely. You have a surprise okay. round. The Full one who is round. casting, I'm just going to fire a lightning bolt at him with my my, my wand of lightning bolt, my staff of lightning bolts. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, do it at a level one. So it's not like I want to save, conserve those right now. I think I think I think Sophia knows like some more stuff's going to go down. So she doesn't want to like burn her power weapon right away. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to stop him from casting whatever he's casting. So um, he needs to make a where is that spell in my lineup? OK, he needs to make a dexterity. They I don't know what their agenda they are. They need to make sure. a dexterity saving throw. All right. Dexterity. 16. OK, the they just passed, so they only take half of this. But let me just okay. go ahead and roll those D6s. OK, so that's that's 35 total before Oof. the the having. So keepers. This is wrong. So what is that, 17? 17 damage. Cool. Okay. Cool. And now I roll initiative. Sorry. Um, You're good. Yeah. Since I rolled so high, I'm like, I do want to point out this. Yes. This is a pretty you're good absolutely, roll, so. You're absolutely yeah. valid. Cool. Okay. I have rolled for my initiative on my monsters. You need to add us to the turn order so we can put in oh, our. Oh, sorry. Yes. No worries. Do that. You have a lot going on. All right, you are all in the turn order. Sophia, initiative. 10. And Lydia? 19. 19. Who drew? Uh, I got a, what did I roll? Sorry, it's on the, it should be on the roll 20 thingy. Um, I rolled a 16. 16. All right. You put those in descending order. Lydia, what is your um, dexterity number? Uh, for dex, I have uh, 14. Uh, 14 is... Or, sorry. Right. No, what were you saying? What is your, your dexterity number is 14? Do I need to roll dexterity or? No, no, no. no. What yeah. is the number on your sheet? What's your modifier? 14. Plus, yeah. plus, oh, my modifier plus two. It's a plus two. Okay, so the siren is actually going to go before you. Um, as it has a higher dexterity. Uh, the siren continues to sing and uh, says, now what is this that I can't see with ice cold hands taking hold of me? And it's going to cast Fog Cloud centered in the middle of the ship. Or middle of the boat, I should say. So we'll... we'll that on the token layer. So that is where the fog cloud is. And then the siren will scoot away again. Lydia, it's your turn. Okay, how close am I to um to the guy casting the spells? You are you're at the prow, you're about 60 feet away. Okay, um, then I am going to, uh, the only thing I really do uh, is I'm going to hide. Okay. You have, uh, so you, up here in the cockpit area, mm -hmm. you've got some area to hide behind. Do you want to hide up here or do you want to move somewhere else? Um, yeah, I'll move a little closer to um, where Sophia is. Okay. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's like some some boxes and barrels you can hide there. Perfect, and then I'll hide. Great. Uh, roll stealth for me. Okay. Do do do. Stealth. Where are you? Boom. That is uh, fifteen. Okay. Good to know. Tuturu, it's your turn. All right. Um, Tuturu, are there any on the boat? 
There are none on the boat presently. Looking around, they're all about 40 to 60 feet away from the boat, but they are closing fast, and you can see that there are wakes, sort of like, they're, it's like a motorcycle gang closing in on you. There's jet skis um, coming, and it's, uh, it's, it's or, or a reference that makes sense in a fantasy setting. Um, <laughs> oh what about Dennis Hopper? Yeah, I mean, you've been to Avernus. This looks like a motorcycle gang. All right. Except for, except for that its horses made of water, like, not made of water, but they look like giant seahorses. That's okay. Ross, like, hey, I know friends like you. <laughs> right. I have a thing on my, on my button. All right, let's see. Um... Norse Foundry, thanks for the raid. Yes, thank Ooh, you, Norse Foundry. Norse Foundry. Thank you. Um, let me see, because I know I have a special cleric thing I can do here. Yeah, I have a lot of Norse Foundry things, like a non-zero um, number. Maybe not a lot, but. Uh, uses, oh, a short rest. Great. Um, Channel Divinity. Does that have a range on it? It should say on the ability that you're using if your channel, which channel divinities have ranges. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Let's see. What is the name of the uh, Turn ability? Undead. Ah. Mm. Let's take a look together, shall we? Yes. Turn in our hymnals. Because to... I just see one action. Player's handbook out here. Uh, CR one or lower. When the undead. Da, 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 da. Channel Divinity, turn undead. As an action, you present your oh, holy symbol you and part, speak yeah. the prayer, censuring the undead. Each undead that can see or hear you within 30 feet yeah. must make a wisdom saving throw. If a creature fails its save, it's turned for a minute or until it takes any damage. So 30 feet. I was All looking right. at destroy undead. Which yes, which I do have as well. Also um, good. Which it, which it will be actually if I if I uh -huh. if they fail. Um, but they are not thirty feet, right? You said sixty. Not yet. They are on their way in. They're about some of them are about forty feet from you. The closest one to you. All right, I'm is, just gonna uh, hold. I'm gonna hold my turn until I feel like they're about a, a good majority of them are all thirty feet. I'm gonna wait until the last one is thirty feet. Fabulous. Make a perception check since you are in light fog right now. Uh. Great, I will do that. Um, can I use my very good ears to listen instead? Listen for the yes, you may absolutely. Great. Um, perception. Boop -a -doop -a -doop. Mm, I got a thirteen. I do have an A here. Does that mean I have advantage? Yes, because you're listening. Oh, oh, that's weird. Why did that one look lower? Okay, uh, I got a 13. Okay, good to know. I mean, it's not horrific fog. Right. And you can hear the the uh, the, the uh, tide uh, underneath of these horses coming towards you. So it's not, you, you, have a, you will have a general sense of when they're close. Beautiful. Uh, it's now going to be that caster's turn. Um, the, this one is going to ride its, its, uh, its horse... Uh, towards the ship. And it's going to come right up to the edge because it has a 40-foot movement speed. Cool. Um, and it is going to... Uh, it has... This, is, this appears to be a returned triton. Um, very recently slain of one kind or another. It is wearing a gold mask emblem uh, emblematic of the god of the dead. And it is gathering up a... Uh, a bolt of necromantic energy and it's going to send it at Sephia. I'm resistant, by the way. To necromantic necrotic uh, energy. Well, that 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 would be relevant if I could hit you. But I rolled, <laughs> a, I rolled a six on my dice. So yeah, you, didn't, it, you didn't hit me. It did not hit you. Um so uh the bolt sort of crashes like water against rock and has no effect on you. Um, but the horse whinnies and uh, the pale rider on its back is right up in your face. Safia, it's your turn. All right. Uh, I am going to pull my awesome Dekela Bident of Thassa and take a swing at it with both hands because it's awesome to do that. And so I'm going to roll for that. Perfect. 
It is and a three Biden. So uh, yeah, and that was uh, seventeen of a dice plus six. So that's going to be a twenty. What's that? Twenty three hit? Yeah, that'll hit. Okay, I hope so. Otherwise, this is going to be a really short fight. That's um, right. <laughs> um cool so uh here's what's fun about this thing is that so i, I did it two-handed so first of all that's uh, um Ew. d8 plus three so Ooh. that's gonna be uh it's gonna be nine plus uh i get with the with with the biden of the deep um i also get to make them take an extra 2d10 of cold damage uh using the biden um Okay, and that's going to be seven more cold damage. Plus, I have a feature as a, as a uh, Tempest Cleric where I get to add a Divine Strike to my turns. So I get to also add a D8 of Thunder damage to this Oof. attack. So, uh, so many that's going to be four more Thunder damage on top of all that. So all right. that's all what I do. And then as a bonus action... Uh, I am going to cast Spiritual Weapon, uh, yeah. and I'm going to put it right in front of that dude, and what it's going to be is uh, is it's going to be a, it's gonna be my dolphin again. So a dolphin comes popping up out of the water, and it looks at it, and it's just like, it just does like the little fins, and it flips around, and let me see how the attack goes before I describe what the dolphin actually does, because I don't want to make it sound really cool and then have it not work, um, like I did with Lydia last time, which was like... No worries. You know, what happened um so that's plus eight so unfortunately uh that was a crit fail so that does not hit so instead of a dolphin does it not hit so um, <laughs> yeah um i gave you this little symbol of fasa here uh should be able to be controlled by you cool. on the roll 20. yeah uh, so, so go ahead and put that wherever you'd like and no, it um yeah. or i can move it if you prefer no yeah uh, okay. but yeah i missed and it swings and misses, and there is a spiritual dolphin that's sort of bobbing right there. But you see this uh, returned uh, get hit with this massive swipe from this Bident, and it smacks the mask off of its face. And this, the mask uh, crashes into the water, and it turns back to you. And the face that you see is that of your baby daddy dead in front of you this is oh, a no, returned me. version of palamon oh well now they pissed me off so yeah oh uh, snap it's, it's now going to be some of these uh, other drifters they are going to that one can't quite get anywhere so it's going to up onto the ship and sort of be up on the back. This one is going to do the same, probably. Yeah, it's too far away. So the two horses with riders are up on where the steering wheel is. Oh. Uh, and then these other two probably also aren't going to be able to get there. One, two, three, four. Six. Yeah. So they will charge. Uh, one of them, it, they'll stay off the ship, actually. One of them will get in melee with two true, and the other one will almost be to on the ship. Uh, then the, this other one that has a huge sword is going to charge right at two true, and that one. I was it already in thirty feet because I'm waiting. Yes, all of them are now within thirty feet. Okay. Does this one deal damage first? Nope. Let me let me know when you, I do my action. You may do your action right now. Cool. As soon as Tushiru sees that they're in in the distance in here, she'll grab onto her pendant of Mont Celestia, and um, she will present it to all of them, and she will uh, whisper, or not whisper, she will present it loud and proud, and say, um, Behold the power of Mont Celestia! You are not welcome here or anywhere. Return to your sleep. And um, she will cast Turn Undead. Okay. Every return has turn resistance, which means they have advantage on the saving throws against Turn Undead. Well, so I will, I will roll. <laughs> I, will roll I feel like a little bit of Cali just slipped out there. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> that was not too true. <laughs> right. uh, so first we will go with the uh, the caster. 
uh, advantage is this is a wisdom save. Uh, I believe so. Yes. Seventeen. Um. What is my save? <laughs> I will tell you in a moment. Um. Uh, turn on dead. Is it just your normal spell DC? Probably. If you hit spells, it'll be in that top little section. There. Oh, beautiful. Um, spell Thank DC you. 16. Okay, so the caster succeeds. Uh, the one that was just about to swing at you fails. So it becomes destroy undead. <laughs> now, what does that do? It kills it. Just kills it outright, regardless yep. of... It is instantly of destroyed. If it is CR lower level than the threshold of my level. Starting at fifth level, when undead fails at save throw against your turn, the creature is instantly destroyed if its challenge rating is at or below a certain threshold on the destroy undead table. You are cleric level eight? Yep. The caster is not destroyed. Mm. Uh, three of the four drifters, however, are destroyed as they are below CR1 or lower. So three of them are instantly turned into mush. You see little leaves, little green leaves, just poof, poof, poof. It's a pretty, it's a pretty effective casting of that. <laughs> Bad. Uh, it's going to be the siren's turn. The siren is going to keep... On, oh, did you have a bonus? I apologize. No, you're fine. Um, So that is my action. Um... <laughs> And then as my bonus, I will, I, um, is the caster the one that is in melee range with me? I'm assuming no. Uh, no, uh, that is the swords person. Okay. What it happens to the sword person? Handle divinity. It is turned for a minute. It can't willingly, move, can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you. It's already in, a, uh, in range of you though. It can't take reactions and it can only use the dash action to try to escape. Good to cool. know. So it is going to uh, run. Well, it's out of movement now. Uh, so it's just going to stay there. Uh, okay. But it can't, it can't attack you, it looks like. If there's nowhere to move, the creature can use the dodge action. So the fighter will use the dodge action. Okay. <laughs> nowhere to run, nowhere Great. to run. And its turn, I guess, right there. Uh, it is sort of like frozen with fear directly in front of you. Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention, by the way, is that when, uh, Safia, when you struck the returned uh, and knocked the mask off, the eyes glowed a little bit of golden red uh, as that uh, creature does have fleeting anger. Um, one question I have, this is more of her flavor than anything else, because... I had I had done the swimming pool thing more as like a downtime action, and I know we're using it as what Astarok is doing. Does that count against me for casting concentration no. spells during this? Con okay, cool. Because I like I didn't want to like cast a spell and then just hear Astarok thump no. against the deck behind. <laughs> no. uh, we'll, we'll assume you have a kiddie pool uh, available. Okay. I like the idea that Astarok is like I I'd come help you fight, but uh, this is this is pretty good. I'm getting some pretty good egress here in this pool. So. <laughs> I like your Astarok impression a lot better than my Astarok impression. I will say is, that. Is turn I say Jordan a lot. <laughs> so, so turn undead is a channel divinity, and yes. that is um, an action. But is yes. that considered a spell? No, it is a class feature, so not a spell. Oh, cool. So Very if you cool. had if you had a bonus action, you could you could so, cast a spell. So I um, I can do a well, cantrip. So because you held your action. Uh, that that is the essentially that would end your turn. You could have done it on your turn order as a bonus action as a cantrip. No, is held the same as like delay? Like I didn't move, I didn't do anything. I literally said I like I'm not doing anything, and I'm right. going to drop my initiative until. Sure, we can drop your initiative. That will that works. We will do is, that. Is instead. that how that works, or like just so I know in the future how to do um, it? I think that's is that how it works. I I don't know if there's a drop initiative. Um, rule uh in i might in be thinking of a different tradition. system okay yeah but we can <laughs> say that you did kinda, and you can have and you can have a bonus time yeah. yeah exactly for sure so go ahead and okay. take your bonus if you have one cool i'm just gonna give guidance to uh lydia so i'm gonna look at lydia after turning all these things undead and i'm gonna be like it's your turn and wink at her <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. perfect 
Uh, it's now the siren's turn. Uh, the siren is not interested in this combat, and it's going to... Oh, wait, to... I have to walk up to her. Never mind, I can't do that. I did not guide Ansel Lydia. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's fine. Um, <laughs> Thank you for trying. I you just gave her, like, a really good word of encouragement, and she feels really good. I did. <laughs> the the siren is, is disinterested in this combat anymore. It is going to drop the fog cloud and cast greater invisibility on itself. Uh, it's going to keep singing, though, so there's haunting hymns as you continue this combat. Lydia, yeah. back to you. Uh, you've, you watched uh, two of these beasties emerge from the deep, come up onto the boat, and immediately get turned into ash and dust uh, as uh, Tuturu turned them away. There appear to only be three remaining. Okay, so there's the caster. Um, how are they? They're all within 30 feet, right? They're all well within 30 feet of you, yes. Okay, so uh, it, it's to come out of hiding. Is that that counts as an action, right? Nope, you can just nope. step out of a barrel. Right. So I'm going to come out of hiding. I'm going to um, reach for which one, the closest one. Uh, you are 10 feet from the caster, you're about 15 okay. feet from the sword one. Um, ooh, I'm going to do the sword one. I think I'm going to have better luck with sword eight. Okay. I, I think, I think Sophia kind of gives you a look regarding the caster of like, I, I this one's mine. Like, I'm taking this one down. <laughs> How dare yeah. this one? I, I mean, you wouldn't know the face that Sophia's looking at, but you're, you get a feeling something really personal is going on right now. So, and Sophia's like very much like, how dare this being wear my, my ex lover's face? So, mm -hmm. oh, Sophia mad. Lydia likes Sophia mad. All right. <laughs> um, perfect. So then I am going to, um, yeah, go to that one and I am going to hit with my rapier. Great. Okay. And that is dirty 20. Yep, that'll hit. Ruben, can you mark with an X the ones that are already defeated so it's easier for us to tell? Yes, I can actually remove the giant... Um, awesome. The, the seahorses of That's the ones that are defeated. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, and so for damage, I rolled a nine. Okay. Um, and then it is engaged with one of your allies. Do you have any bonuses for that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, no, I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, hit him with the dagger then because I can. That's my bonus. Okay. And so that is 24. 24 hits. And the damage on that is a four. Okay. And that was just straight up slashing and piercing damage, right? Heck yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and it takes that damage and you slash, slash into it and it has these cuts in it and it looks down and looks back up to you and it has those orange red eyes as if it also has fleeting anger. Oh. It's now going to be the caster's turn. The palum knight, as this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is the cacomantis. The cacomantis Great. is going to try to unleash another underworld bolt directly at you. Uh, 15 to hit you. That's me? No, 15 to hit, uh, Sophia. Okay. That does hit me. Okay, 15. Uh, so this is going to be 2d8 necrotic. So it'll be halved. Okay. 2d8 necrotic. Uh, 3 necrotic damage, reduced to 1. Okay. And you cannot regain hit points until the start of my next, uh, until its next turn turn okay i'm going to use my reaction to cast wrath of the storm on it so i needed to make a dexterity saving throw 14 plus 3 17 okay so i'm gonna take half of this let me just roll the damage real quick actually let's do it on this to make oh no i can't okay uh the buttons aren't there where are my dice where are my dice Ooh, all right. So I rolled a nine, so it'll take it'll take four. Okay. Four lightning damage. Sounds good. So it casts a bolt into you and re in a retributive retrib retributive ugh. in response, it's gonna take a bunch of lightning I'll damage as well. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I go I go mine hit harder. <laughs> Not wrong. 
And not only that, but it's also your turn. Okay. Uh, I am going to take another whack at it with that big old, big old Triton. Triton? Bidens? Yep. Little siren. Little sirens going by. Gonna use there is a bite. siren somewhere out there in the ocean, too. Yeah. Singing. Singing as the combat okay. goes on. That is going to be a 17 to hit. That hits. Cool. All right. So let's just go ahead and do this gauntlet of damage again. I'm just going to do it quicker on D&D Beyond this time around. Okay. Um, let me just go ahead and get my actions here. So first, it's going to do the D8 plus three, which is not great. It's only going to do four from that. Uh, okay. It's four magical piercing damage. Then it's going to do... Um, where's my thing? Okay. Then it's going to do 2d10 cold damage. So that's eight. That's pretty good. Uh, so that's eight cold damage. And then it's going to do also my... I'm just going to go ahead and do my class feature as well. Swing, do some more damage to it. Because okay. uh, I'm pissed. I'm real pissed. <laughs> I'm real mad at this thing. So let's go ahead and toss some thunder damage at it. Um, that's going to be six, which is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, is it still standing? It is still standing. How's it looking? Very rough. Okay. Uh, your baby daddy has looked started this camp combat looking pretty bad. This is but not is... him. <laughs> this is yeah. not Palamon. C certainly uh, looks like it's being held together by string and tissue paper. Okay. Bonus action. Going to take that spiritual weapon, take a big old whip at it. Uh, okay, that's a lot better this time around. That's a, that's going to be a uh, 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 twenty-one to hit. That it's cool. So then the dolphin's going to do a big old flip around, smack it with its tail, and then that's going to be a dice roll. All right, and that's going to be seven force damage coming down on it Oof. with that tail. That awesome. is enough to put that character down, what would you like to happen to the body? Um, I think that once once the returned part of it is like defeated and it's back to just being a body again, I think that when it hits the water, Safia is going to hold up her, um, her necklace and say a quiet, just a real quick quiet prayer to, um, to Thassa uh, because... The Tritons are typically pretty devout Thassa worshippers as well. And mm -hmm. so I think that Thassa would appreciate the body being given back to her. So luckily it's kind of already a burial at sea. And so once once the, the like returned spirit is gone, she doesn't have any more anger towards it because now it's back to being his body again. And so it's being laid to rest in Thassa's ocean. So perfect. And it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And then I, I turn around and look at the I look at the one that's still there, and I just go, "You're next." <laughs> You're right. It is that one's turn. Uh, it's gonna jump off of its steed and come up to you. And this one, this one's like not. It, this one appears to be just some town's person, right? That has been turned into a returned. This is no warrior. This is no uh, palace guard. This is. Uh, a merchant or a baker or something, um, but they are returned now, and their gold mask looks at you, and they swing. What do they swing? They swing a scimitar. Natural 20. Um, for a total of 11 slashing damage. Okay. Plus four poison damage. Okay. Uh, question: Because I because um, Palamon is gone, does that mean that that healing thing is no longer active? Because Correct. he was okay. Cool. It was only for one turn. Cool. Um, but if it kept hitting you, it would have been you know one turn, yeah. one turn, one turn. Gotcha. Uh, and it is now engaged with you, and it uh, stares you down. On the other side of the ship, it is going to be the. Pa Palom Knight's turn, and it pulls out two short swords and takes uh, two swings at Tuturu. That's a two on one of the dice. Mm. The other die is a 18 to hit you. That will hit. Okay. And this is... But barely. Oh, wait. I can do my Wrath of the Storm that thing that attacked me again because I've had my turn, so I have a reaction yes. again. I'll let finish this turn, and then I'll roll after okay. that. 
Uh, this is nine piercing damage plus six poison damage. And it also stares you down angrily. All uh, right. Go ahead and do your Wrath of the Storm. I'm going to hold on to it, actually, I think, because I, I don't want to waste them if we're getting towards the finale episode. So I, if, if we have a big combat coming, maybe I want to reserve some of my big resources. That's right. How much is... poison damage? Six. Thank you. Uh, and it is now Tuturu's turn. All right. So there's two things left. Yes. Two. Two angry undead? things. Two okay. undead left. Yes. Great. Um, oh, I was supposed uh, to have disadvantage on my roll because I was turned. I apologize. So you actually take none of that damage unless your armor class is 14. Nope. Okay, so erase all that damage I just did to you. So I'll heal uh, six and six heal and nine. nine. So yeah, so all of that yeah. comes back because I'm afraid. <laughs> Question it's just the running. Then the one that attacked me, would it have been able to move to me to attack me if Tuturu is between... Would it have been able to get closer to me if hmm. Tuturu is where she is? Good question. Let's take a look. I don't think what she would have. Feet, she... It can move... It can't move to where it is, but it can move here. So I'm going to move them there. But that's, that is still closer to Tuturu than it was. So it was 20 feet away, and now it's 20 feet away. Right? Mm, that seems okay. That's fine. <laughs> I can move it 25 feet away. We can move it here, which puts it right in range with your spiritual weapon. But I'm saying it has to cross through an area where Tuturu is to. Okay. I, I'm not, it's not that big of a deal. I'll let, move on. Yeah. It, I mean, it doesn't have to. Let me take a look. It's fine. I will turn yeah, it on. Just move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Fair enough. All right. Tuturu, it's your turn. <laughs> Um, so is the one that is resistant, but I noticed had it had no effect on, is it still around? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Well then. Um, okay. Well, I am going to turn and look at Sophia and notice that she has taken quite a lot of damage and I'm going to give my friend some good heals. Ooh, hashtag, hashtag good healing. Um, good vibes and, only. Yes, um, so I'm going to heal her with the healing, which one's the one that's not touched? It's the healing word. I'm going to give her some healing words today. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a first, how, 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 uh, how much pain are you in right now? I'm actually I'm not the worst. I think, I think like, I think like, a level of healing word would be good. Ooh. Like a, a, a base, a base amount of word would be like a one word. Like, instead of, one instead word. of two healing words, if only one word was healing me, that would be probably fine for now. Great. Well, I maxed it out. I, ma I, I rolled a four on that and got oh. a 12 plus, um, I think it's going to be, let's see, because I have all my divine cleric stuff. So I'm going to look over at Sophia. Notice she's kind of distressed from whatever that she just encountered. And I'm just going to kind of chant some like calming things her way and my little leaves will float over in the wind and splashes and um so you heal 12 plus um one level higher that creature gains an additional hp equal to two plus that level so an additional three hp so 15 hp total okay great yeah, I am. I am now literally one point away from being full. So you, Yay. that was that was. I'm glad you didn't use a higher level spell. So okay. <laughs> yeah. And that one Thank damage you. I did to you with my bolt came back to haunt you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna after I'm like I'm all very calm and serene and like looking at Sophia while chanting this and and then I stop and still and then I open my eyes and then I just glare at the thing in front of me and just raise up my mallet and bring it down. Perfect. Go ahead and roll an attack. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Chill Master Mallet, which I think we listed as a Warhammer? Warhammer, yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right, here we go. Come on, Warhammer swings. Nope, didn't do that. Uh, does five hit? Five does not hit. <sighs> Rats. Okay, well, that that's my turn then. Okay. Um... It is going to be Lydia's turn because the siren is nowhere to be seen. Although you do still hear the music. 
playing in the background on the lyre. Okay. Oh, it, I, I feel like it's starting to get irritating, the music. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm still really close to Swordsy, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so then I'm, I'm just going to do it again. I'm going to go ahead and hit Swordsy with my rapier. Okay. Um, so I come up and strike. And that beautiful, I, uh, 26. 20, that's a natural 20, right? Yep. Perfect. Yeah, that'll, that, that'll crit. And get all that, get all that good bonus dice in there. Okay. Well, so I just rolled my damage. Do I? I didn't need to. Okay. Um, you, roll, you, roll, you, roll, you, roll, you roll your damage twice when you crit. Perfect. So eleven. Uh, okay. So it's going to be eighteen total. Okay. Also, I just want to point this out. That creature is currently engaged with one of your enemies. Right. So you get double sneak attack dice on that as well. You're welcome. Right. <laughs> engage with your ally, I mean to say. Actually, okay, even if right. it wasn't engaged, you as a swashbuckler would get that sweet sneak attack dice anyway. Yeah, well, so, so I... Oh, sorry, what were you saying? No, I was just going to ask how many sneak attack dice you have. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, let me look. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Does she it also get anything for it being though. turned undead? Uh, I don't believe so, no. Sneak attack. Okay, so my sneak attack... Dead. My sneak attack damage is 46. Okay, and because this was a crit, you're going to roll 8d6 and Ooh. add that. Rugs, okay, man. so first one is 16, and that's four of them. Okay. All right, and then for the second, it's going to be 14, so... Oh, that oh, is ah, yes! 16, 14, <laughs> 30, so 30, 30. Cool. Plus the weapon damage, so you dealt forty-two damage to it that round. You did. Yeah. You did plus atoms of damage there. Yeah. All right. So then that's a uh, uh, Lydia comes up. Uh, uh, she rears up and just starts slashing like crazy. Uh, one slash, two slash, one slash, two slash. Make that singing stop. It's creepy. <laughs> uh, and you also still have a bonus action. <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't care if this is overkill. Uh, so Lydia, uh, uh, looks over and, um, just for fun, cause she really likes just stabbing stuff, takes out the dagger, uh, cause stabbing stuff is fun. And that, uh, it's a 13. 13. Does that hit? Does not hit. Oh, so Lydia goes, and now I stab! <laughs> and goes to stab at it, and it just glances off of its hide. And Lydia stumbles a little bit. But I'm good. I'm okay. You didn't see that. That was on purpose. Right. You get a little bit. You get a little bit too uh, too rich for the for your britches or whatever the saying is. And you you're like slashing at the body, slashing at the body, and you're like, haha, stab you in the face. Except for the face is made of gold, so it doesn't oh. it doesn't pierce the face. I wanted to stab a face. This is very similar to that first round where Sophia just like messed it up with the Bident and then and then missed with the spiritual weapon. <laughs> oh, well, it would have been cool. Um, cool. Uh, it is now back to Sophia. You still yeah. have I'm gonna bite one. In this guy yeah, right and in the this, face. This one is uh, not nearly as strong as your uh, as your former uh, beloved. Well, that is a uh, that's a twenty three to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Yeah, I hope so. Otherwise, that's a that's a lot stronger. Uh, that's going to be uh, six damage with with the with the first thing. Then let's go ahead and just roll that on slots again. So I think it was two d tens. I gotta memorize what this says. Um, two d tens. Cool. Um, I'm just gonna roll the the cold and lightning damage all at once to save some time. Okay. Okay, so for the lightning damage, oh, that was actually really good. That was actually 15, oh, sorry, 15 cold damage. Oof. Uh, and the lightning damage just was one. Um, so not as much lightning damage. Uh, is he still up? Uh, no. Okay. That one, uh, you dealt at 22, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's how many hit points it had. Not um, anymore. Not anymore, as that one is sliced in twain. Okay, and then as my bonus action, I'm gonna move my. It's probably not gonna make it for this combat, but I'm just gonna do it anyway, just to like add insult to injury. Um, the dolphin is gonna swim under the boat and go 20 feet, so it doesn't quite make it to the swordsman. But I just thought it would be fun if I tried. Um, so it gets sure to thing. about here. It's under the boat, but yeah, it's going for it. Uh, 
the swords person is going to go now and has two more attacks. These two are going to go at Lydia um, and has, I believe it has advantage on these because the fleeting anger allows it to roll with advantage against creatures that dealt it damage until its next turn. Uh, well, that's not going to do it. Uh, 12 to hit you. Uh, that does not hit. And 16 to hit you. That hits. Okay. I just zoomed uh, in to make sure that wasn't my son on the swordsman, because I, I would never have spoken to Ruben again if that had been the case. Right. Not your son on the swordsman. Um, yeah, after seeing... Son. Right. After seeing Palamon, you can you scan for faces and scan for body types. This is not your son. Uh, eight piercing damage plus ew, eleven poison damage. Ooh. Um. Is that it? Sorry. That's it. So since I can I can see that attacker, right? Yes. So can I use my uncanny dodge as a reaction? You certainly can, and you can half the full. So you can half because it was all one swing. You can half the total. Okay, so cool. That was so then that would be what, eight, like... eleven, nineteen, halved to nine. Okay, I'll take that. Perfect. Uh, two true. One villain remains. All right, two true is going to go ahead and cast a sacred flame on it. Okay. You need uh, to make must, a save? Yep, a dexterity save. Ooh, it fails. Eight. Yay! It will take, let's see. <laughs> it takes uh, 10 radiant damage. Describe for me its grisly demise as the radiant damage puts it down for good. I like to imagine that a... Radiant damage from like a uh, Selesnian cleric looks something like it looks like a bunch of leaves. Um, it, everything's very leaf related. I, w- I, w- I would say this actually looks like it looks like the colors of a sunset glowing around a creature. It's very beautiful. I love that. Um, yeah. And and then it happens, and then it just like pierces into their body very sharply, and and then it's very unsettling. As it is very unsettling as the undead form kind of cracks and the sun glistens off the mask in just the right way that it reminds you of, of a beautiful morning at sea and it is no more. And the combat ends. And the song fades into the distance. Too true, you could swear that you could just barely in the distance see that boatman that took you from Innistrad to Avernus sailing just over the horizon as the sound fades away. Was that that? Where? As if that was the siren? Um, can't be sure. Oh. You'd make a, you could make a perception check or yeah. insight check, maybe. Um... Let's go with perception, because I have advantage on perception. A 16. Um, the music as it was playing during the combat was coming from the same general direction that you think out of the corner of your eye, you see the gondola, and then the gondola is gone. So mm, it could be the same, could, could not be. All right. Weird. I think as the fight ends, I think that Sophia drops her spiritual weapon, so that disappears under the boat. Um, and then she kind of drops to her knees, and she looks visibly upset. Uh, Lydia yeah, will walk over. Sophia, hey! How, uh... You looked kind of shaken up there. I don't usually see you look like that. What's going on? <sighs> The face of that returned was... That was Palamon. That was Odexus's father. Oh. Oh, gosh. Oh. Yeah, that'll do it. How are you feeling? I just want my son to be okay. He will be. Hey, look at me. He will be, okay? I promise. We're going to get this fixed. 
he didn't want this life. He wanted to live under the sea with with Palamon and now he's just dragged into my stuff, a, a life he didn't want, and I never wanted to force on him, and now it's come to his door. Hey, you can't blame yourself for this. You didn't do this. This is not your fault. Sophia, look at me. This isn't your fault. You can't blame yourself for this, okay? We're going to get him back. Let's do this. Let's go. He's got this. And I put my my bite in back on my like back thing. Okay. Like a um, holster. Odie looks at you inquisitively and nuzzles up against your ankle. What is it, buddy? My I'm staying here, right? Yeah. Or my you gotta protect the ship. Okay. Wait, are we just is it, are we above the location? You're directly above the location. I look at Astarok, and I go, hey, that letter you carry around, you might not want to keep it in your pocket for this part. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it, he'll take, like, the stale doe circle off his horn and take the, pop, the paper out of his pocket and, like, feels around for more things that would get ruined in salt water <laughs> and sets those in, in a box back in the bedroom. I'll see you again soon, okay? Odie says. Yeah. And if you don't, Lydia will take care of you. And Fabled42 will raid this. Right. Thank you, Fabled42. Much appreciated. Uh, Odie will look at you and say, but I, but I will see you again. Okay. Claw bump? Claw bump. And I will put my hand down and bump him. Okay. Uh, Odie will take the helm. Love it. Great. He's picturing this little crab trying to like steer <laughs> a boat. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Um, let's do this. Everyone right. ready? I'm ready. All right. How long is a short rest? Short rest is one hour. Yep, I'm ready. Unless we want to take an hour to rest. If you know. if you if you need to rest before what we're doing next, then let's do it because I want I don't want to force you into a thing you're not prepared for. I think I'm actually fine for now. I'll be okay. okay. And if if I need if we need to rest when we're there, we'll figure it out. Lydia, we you always were hurt. do. Do you do you need do you need some healing? I can I can help you. You got hurt helping me, yes. so. Yeah, I could use a little bit. I'm not too banged up. Just. Uh... You know, I have to pop that shoulder back in again. All right. Um, I'm going to cast Healing Word on Lydia. Uh, okay. How how bad are you? Are you looking? Are you pretty banged up? Or are you doing okay? No, like I just need a little bit. I don't. Okay. Think I'm yeah, I'll up. cast Healing Word. Sounds Hold good. On. Are we? Are you? Are you sure? Are you sure Seven. you want to expend it right now and use your energy? I just did. So. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, you know what, she she got hurt helping me, so I am happy to take care of her. Thank you. But thank you for offering, but I have a feeling that that power of yours is going to be pretty useful down below. I hope so. I didn't know I could even do that. It's like, it just occurred to me. I could have been using that when we were over in the hell plane and like, oh, wow, that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Right. Well, if it's anything like the underworld here, I don't know if the creatures there are technically undead the way those were. So maybe, maybe it wouldn't have worked. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they were like more like demons and stuff. I don't know. And My mentor just likes like, to say hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, that's very true. I. Yeah. Are Are we ready to to go? Yeah. Yes, we're ready. So Let's. during your swim lessons, you would have learned the following information, which is all things you can see in the rule book for underwater combat. Uh, melee weapon attacks that aren't made with a dagger, javelin, short sword, or trident are made at disadvantage. Okay. Weapon attacks automatically miss if they're outside of the normal range 
and are rolled at disadvantage inside of a normal range. And creatures that are immersed in water obviously are resistant to fire damage. So those things are all true. You also can move in three dimensions, remember. So you can move up, you can move down, and you can move side to side. And the last thing, as you are going down deep, deep, deeper still, you can breathe because of the water breathing. The pressure is getting a little heavier and the light is getting a lot darker. Those of you without ability to see in the dark no. are going to be unable to see without help. <laughs> so you will need some sort of light source. I can't see. So about 500 feet down, you would probably realize that you would need to get a light source of some kind if you want to handle that before you reach the city. I don't even know what light source would work because we can't light a torch. And I do not have... Oh, wait, I have thaumaturgy, right? I can do that at will. Okay. Let's see what thaumaturgy can do. I think I can light something with it. If I make cause... my... Yep, sorry. Oh No, go ahead. Um, you can cause flames to flicker, brighten, dim, or change color for a minute. Yeah. Um. Yep, that's not going to do it. I, for some you reason, can, I thought I... Oh, go you ahead. Can alter the appearance of your eyes for a minute. <laughs> hmm. Can I alter them so that they appear like they have dark vision so that they do have dark vision? That's an interesting interpretation of that spell. <laughs> It's going to be bad dark vision if it works. I'll go ahead and let you make an arcana check. Oh, to God. See if you can do the science of eyes to get your eyes to see in the dark. With Beautiful. All right, arcana check. Here we go. Plus zero. Come on. I got a two. <laughs> okay. That does not work. No. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I think because I have dark vision, I don't think it's something I would have thought of to have on the boat, because Liddy also has dark vision because of a magic yeah, item, yeah. so. Astarok also, I, d I don't think I can see down here. Level 1 Geek, thanks for the raid. Oh, thank Hi, you, Level, level one, 1 Geek. geek. Thank you. I'm trying to see if I have any items that light up for me. Okay. Um, But if As not, I for I'm going to like... Yeah, I'm looking at my items. I, I, I'm assuming I have rope. You do have rope. Um, can we talk underwater since we have water yes. breathing? With everything you can, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to talk to people. Uh, can I tie a rope to one of you? I'm starting not to be able to see at all. Oh, yeah, you yeah, can tie that's a rope. Fine. Okay, I'll cool. Do it to Lydia because I swim pretty fast and I might yeah. end up dragging you pretty quickly away from me if I do that. Oh, also, so I posted the underwater issues in the chat on Roll20 if you guys need to quickly check those. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um... As you approach the city, you can see that there are some sporadic light sources in the city itself. Um, some sort of continual flame spells, some amount of magical light is in the area, but it's not fully lit. Um, and you can emerge uh, or, or find your, your uh, base of operations uh, on the edge of the city. It looks like a lot of the city has been destroyed um, a lot of the buildings are, uh, uh, in this particular section of the city, have been leveled, and only parts of walls remain in this particular section, um, which you know is sort of a courtyard outside that leads towards uh, the palace throne room itself. This is my fault. It's not your fault. Um... So we, I think I think I would head towards I, I think I would head towards like the general idea of what I remember seeing of where my son was being held, like the, where those domes were. So wh whatever part of the city that I remember seeing them in that vision, I would go towards that. So uh, you would know that uh, where your son is, is in a redoubt. It's in a essentially a panic room. Um hidden in the in the throne room okay um and uh designed to be uh the last resort the helm's deep equivalent uh to be able to keep the the royal family safe 
Um, it is inside of a giant clamshell um, in the throne room. And that would be at this point on the map, down in the lower right corner. And you are currently in the upper left corner here. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see. Yep. Okay. Hey, Jordan's here? Yep. Hey! Jordan, just so you know, because we're at the bottom, you, you, you had Breathe Underwater cast on you, and also while you were we were traveling to this location, Sophia gave you and Tutoru some basic swimming lessons. And also, Sophia very much advised you to leave your letter behind so that it wouldn't get ruined by the water when you went swimming. So you left your water on the boat, your letter on the boat. Ah, uh, I, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> it's probably been I mean, if you, choose, if, you, if you want to say you didn't do it, Ruben and be role-played you having done it, but... It's right. probably a good idea. If it's, it's left, it's character. left. Yeah. All right. Also, well, I did a well, killer well, impression of Astaroth earlier to see you now. Hello. Sorry I'm late, everybody. You're quite uh, all right. Real life takes precedence. I I'll be quiet for a moment as I figure out what's going on, but please sure. proceed. Um, Everyone's dead. We all died. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people dead and a lot of buildings destroyed as you emerge in at the bottom of the ocean, um, which, by the way, uh, Astarok, uh, a lot of things don't work at the bottom of the ocean. Um, you can go ahead and read in our chat, in the Roll20 chat, to see what kinds of things don't work. In addition, it's very dark down here. Um, it is total darkness in areas that are not lit by continual flame spells or uh, other magical sources of light. All right. Seems dark. <laughs> um, Sophia uh, and Tuturu, I would say, go ahead and make perception checks as you get to this uh, sort of lookout post. Uh, okay. 23. Would I be making that with disadvantage? Uh, no, this would just be regular. Um, not listening. Uh, you're just looking, looking around. Or feeling. You would be feeling in the water. Great. Um, I mean, because my listening is high. Okay. I got a 13. Sophia? Oh, wait. 13 plus 5. I got a uh, okay. 18. Much better. And Sophia? 23. 23. Okay. Um, both of you can tell that there is some sort of movement in the water. Something is pacing around the area between where you are and where you're trying to get to. And you can definitely, both of you can tell that there is some sort of large swimming beast right there, right okay. over here. And it's moving uh, so, not slowly, but not quickly either. Uh, Sophia, you can tell that there is another one a little bit further off, about uh, much further away uh, down here. We can't we can't see much of this map at all because it's all dynamic lighting. So we only right. see like the exact spot we're at right now, just so you know. Fair enough. There are two large uh, animals uh, of some kind pacing around reload. in the darkness. Okay. So I can't see where anyone is. Do we have any magical sources of lighting going on right now? No, because nobody no. nobody had a spell for it. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll just oh, knew you guys. We're tied. I'm tied to a rope that's attached to Lydia. What, what and, am I attached to? Uh, you're attached to me with the same rope. You're holding on to the same rope. All right. <laughs> Sophia's holding on to her last robe. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Uh, you all are about, let's take a look. You're about 230 feet from where you're trying to get to. How would you like to proceed? Well, again, we, because we can't see the terrain in front of us, it's hard for us to tell how we're going to proceed because we can't see it. Like, um, okay. I'll I have dark vision, so I don't understand why I can't see what's in front of me. Well, you have 60 feet of dark vision. And yeah, and you have the map is... blacked out for 15 feet in front of me. Oh, I th I sh it should be better than that. Let That's me, why me... I was telling you that we couldn't see, because it was too dark. Let me make sure that you have the requisite amount of dark vision. You have 60 feet of dark vision. Um, um, I don't I'll... think they're spawned on the map, because I just see me in a corner, and okay. I don't see them anywhere. I'll just, so turn, the... No, we're the next to I'll just oh. turn the dynamic lighting off. Sorry. Um, there we go. I'll just turn the dynamic lighting on. So there, you should be able to see it now. 
um, and you have to get to the across this sort of ruined city area. I will okay. zoom in so I can only see what's in front of me. Oh, there I am. Yeah. And uh, you can you can tell that there are large predators of some kind moving around this area, looking for scavenged bits. Uh, one of them is going to get relatively close to you. Uh, go ahead and make stealth checks, everybody. Oh, God. Uh, normally, I'd get disadvantage on stealth checks, but not with my new armor. <laughs> there you go. So with disadvantage, do you take the lowest one? Uh, if it's a disadvantage, you take the lowest one. However, you are underwater, and a lot of the heavy armor negativity is from clankiness. So oh. I'll just let you roll regular. Oh. Okay. Great. Well, my first roll was still awful, so... I rolled a... four. Okay. Lydia? Uh, I rolled a 20. All right. Thank you for letting me use that roll. <laughs> Astarok, always quiet and graceful, rolled a 21. Ooh. Wow. La di da. <laughs> and Sophia? I rolled a 10, all that, so. Okay. All that swimming practice paid off. 20, 21, 4, and 10. Yeah, I don't think Sophia is that focused on stealth right now. I think she's too focused on what she's trying to get done, so. That makes I sense. I didn't yeah. roll that good on my perception, so. I think that this giant, uh, what looks like a massive shark skeleton sort of ambles by looking for things and does not seem to detect you. And it will move on. I think Sophia knew that it was probably a shark based on its size and then like was getting ready to do something with her bident. And then when she saw that it's a skeleton of a shark, she kind of just goes, oh, okay, that's... Okay, and like uh, doesn't do what she was going to do. Asterok returns the shark's favor and doesn't notice it. <laughs> All right. Um... Teacher is going to whisper. Did you see what it is? What what it is? It sure feels like it's bad. I assume water just always feels like that, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I think when when you ask Sophia if I saw what it was, I go, I, I look at her. And like think about what I know about Tuturu, and then I go, nope, didn't see what it was, and then I just, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna scout ahead a little bit faster than you all. So let me just, I'm gonna go a little bit further. So I'm gonna go about sixty feet away. Um, okay. So I'm gonna go to uh, right about the border of where this like bit of the wall is. Um, okay. So like hereish. Yeah, because I figure that's, that Lydia can see me, even the other two can't. So Lydia knows how to like get to me. And also, I can move fast enough that if something happens to them, I can get to them within that yeah. move, whereas they wouldn't be able to get to me as fast. So, Yep, it looks like you've snuck in behind where that shark was circling, uh, and it does not notice you, and you get there. Okay. Um, and then I kind of like wave at Lydia to like come to me. Like I'm, I'm kind of like planning on doing like a... Um, like a recon, like I'm going to move forward, get, make sure it's safe, have them come to me. Same thing. And then like over and over again. Sounds and like I'm watching now that I've seen what the shark is, I'm watching it. So it starts moving towards us again. I'm going to like stop them so they don't come into its path. Okay. Um, you see that that one is still swimming away from you, but the other one appears to be circling around okay. and may I'm get gonna, to you later. I'm going to motion to where that like, there's like this like rock formation here. Uh, and I'm going to kind of make motion to Lydia to kind of like maybe come around that so they're hidden. Okay. And I'm going to hide behind this little bit of rubble here so that if the shark comes by me, it doesn't immediately see me. Excellent. Perfect. What, what would the three of you tied up together like to do? Be surprised when the direction the rope is going changes. <laughs> and, go, oh, and then kind of follow that. Yeah, I'm following exactly what Sophia said. Yeah. Okay. I'm that way. Great. And yeah. teacher is going to cast guidance on Lydia and be like, thank you for guiding us in this. Oh, thank Perfect. you. So you can get hidden behind that rock as the shark appears to be still circling uh, counterclockwise away from you. And that first one that you saw 
uh, is, is much closer to where you're trying to get to now, but further away from where you are. Okay. Next moves. Um, Tutor is just going to keep her eyes closed this whole time and really focus on the movements of the water with her sensitive hearing to try to help Lydia as much as possible. Tutor has sonar. Um, <laughs> Got those um, I'm to right ears. to me again. I'm not, I'm not going to move ahead until okay. they're close to me again. All right. Okay. They can, easy enough, they can come up to you behind that outcropping of a building that used to be there, but has recently been destroyed in some way. Okay, so just so I get the pattern, this shark down here is the one that was moving kind of clockwise, counterclockwise away from us? Yes, and well, they're okay. both moving counterclockwise. Yeah. But I, I'm trying. I, I don't want to move towards that one, so right. I'm making sure. So I think that I'm going to now go 60 feet this way. So kind of like behind this, and kind of like hide behind this Pete, this like little ruin here. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. And then and again, and then in this motion for them to follow me. Like once I once I get there, and I know that's weird. Once I, I know, you, I'm, sorry. Okay. Yeah. That was um, my bad. And then I'll look back at Lydia. And be like, so. Continue Perfect. moving. And uh, underwater, I can hit that 60 feet, so we'll go over that way. Okay. Um, it is going to, you're pulling two people behind you, though, so it is a little bit harder, but easy enough. You're able to get into that building uh, as this top shark is rounding shark. where you used to be. Mm -hmm. Top shark. <laughs> Formerly left shark of <laughs> a, a meme from 10 years ago fame. <laughs> um, I was on the left. A little bit left, <laughs> yeah. To the left, to the left. All right. Uh, the sharks are now placed where they are. This one appears to be catching up to you if you continue on the current path. The top okay. one. Um, I think now I'm going to go... Because I think I'm, I would figure that out, that we're in its path. So mm -hmm. I think I would probably go down to here, which is 30, 30 feet. So I would go to this little open way, uh, entryway thing here. And then I would go the, the 30 feet that I go to be like kind of the edge of this pool. So that's what I would go. Um, and I would, I would probably, yeah. So. And as you emerge into that area, all of you, this part is much better lit. This central pool appears to have magical light emanating from it. Um, the predators who prefer to stay uh, out of the light uh, are kind of uh, circling away from it um, because they think that things are probably hiding in the corners. This one rounding this corner is blocked by buildings, and this one is also, so... That's a good spot for you to be right now. Yeah. And Sophia's happy because that means that means Sutra was not going to immediately see the skeleton shark. So she's like, nope, I don't, mm -hmm. I did, didn't see anything. Nope. Not <laughs> um, well, the, other thing, the other thing that you do see as you're coming through this courtyard of destroyed buildings is there are occasional signs of what used to be life no longer. Um, much of it has been taken away by the tide and the waves, but there is still the occasional torn coat, um, crumbled carriage or, or um, food cart. Um, there is a stuffed animal uh, that appears to be discarded off to one side. I'm not, I'm not happy. This is, this is not right. Wait, wait, sorry, wait, can, can we, did you say there was a bit of light now? Yeah. Yes, this central area is pretty well lit. Okay. Oh. This was a glorious city. There was so much joy and happiness here. Then there we will make sure. Are you okay? I. I don't know. Okay. You ready to keep moving? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, and kind then I'm going to move. Oh. No, and just kind of like. And I'll squeeze it back. back. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to go. So I feel like I, I, can, I can actually get all the way to the border now where it starts to drop down a little bit. Yes. So I'm going to move there. All right. You can get to where the shelf of the 
of this outcropping drops off into more of a ravine, which you know is sort of the entrance to the underground um, uh, throne area, uh, sort of leading towards where you know the redoubt is. Um, and as your compatriots are following you, they can't quite get all that way. Uh, and this shark is going to get line of sight on you. Yeah. So I'm going to have it roll a perception check. Six on the dice. So it does not <laughs> spot you from across the courtyard. So you too are able to drop down to where Safia is. No, okay. <clears throat> right, deeper it is. You can make it uh, to where you know the entrance to the throne room is. However, the throne room appears to be locked by a puzzle. Oh. The puzzle that's on your screen now. Cool. And there are, it is a pyramid. And the pyramid's instructions read, the monarch of Calchas understands the value of trade. And so too shall its citizens. To enter their majesty's throne room, one must first complete the pyramid. By placing coins in their rightful places, you may gain entry. No one coin can touch one of the same type. Insert the correct coin into the final circle to complete the pyramid and be allowed to enter. It appears as if there's one gold coin that is glued in place and several other coins that are scattered uh, nearby for you to be able to place. You should be able to control those uh, if you're in the roll 20. Meanwhile, the sharks are still circling around. Oh boy, man, the, these people must have had a really difficult time in their dailies comings and goings, you know? <laughs> it's like, what if every time you had to get into your throne room, you had to, you know, rearrange a bunch of coins around? <laughs> I'm saying it could work, but it seems impractical. <laughs> that seems impractical. My son's in danger. Um. <laughs> yeah, and I'm saying the situation would be better if they didn't have, you know, a complicated coin puzzle. <laughs> I just don't see what the upside is for them. All right. Uh, boy. Yeah. This is not... <laughs> boy. Boy, this is All not right. something I'm, I usually do. Is I'm not great at puzzles. Um, That's puzzle. okay. If you... All right. Well, let's, okay. let's see what they have here. Yeah. First thing we got to do, the, the gold ones can't touch the gold ones. It's already there, so that's that's a bunch we can just put down like right off the bat. And if the if the silver and the copper can't touch each other, then it has to be one of e alternating each other around it. So yeah, sure. They, they got to switch to Velma again. I, I haven't been doing that all season. The last week of this week, I suddenly do it. So do we need to place all of them, or just the one in the question mark slot? Yeah. There's... I guess if we play some all, then we'll figure out which one's in the question mark slot, maybe? I don't know. Well, I guess we have nothing to lose than to try it, right? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Can we see in this area? <laughs> um, You can see well enough the reflections of the coins. You can Great. at least see which Bless metals you. are which. Great. Okay, well then... Lydia, well, are you good with coin? <laughs> um, I mean, my, I'm looking at this and my brain hurts. Uh, okay. But uh, I can kind of see it. Well, well I gotta start moving them in here, so. Well, if we only need to get the final circle. Well, remember, it's, it's all gonna fit together. That That's the thing about these sort of deals. Like, if, yeah, I just, just work towards one that could fit in the final circle, but then it won't fit in a greater puzzle, then it's going to be wrong. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I, already I think we have a a good... So I think if we do like this, then... Ah, oh, but see, that's already not going to work because... Yeah, but oh, wait, no. That would work you can do this and you can do that. And, and that means can this has to be that. The... The, go the puzzle is taking shape as the alternating silver and copper go around the gold pieces and the alternating silver and gold go around the copper pieces. And you're able to find that indeed 
a gold piece does go in that lower corner. Yeah, but also this one goes here, and uh, this <laughs> fits over there. All right, we need to find five more pieces. Oh, <laughs> perfect, yep. Uh. Yeah. It seems you have quite a knack for puzzles, Astarok. Yeah, oh, I used to do the crossword while I was walking, you know? We did a puzzle, <laughs> hooray! Woo. I'm very excited. You learned how to swim and do a puzzle on the same day. Awesome. Well done. Uh, and that does indeed unlock uh, the door, which makes a noise as it starts cracking open. Uh, go ahead and make a, one last stealth check for me as this final shark rounds the bend. Can we see it now? Shark, do, do, yes. do, 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 final shark. <laughs> the shark is, is up on the leg just over the crest, and it can look down onto where you all are. And it's a bone shark, it. right? It is a bone shark. I got an eight. Hey, look, okay. it's a bone shark. <laughs> <laughs> I got an 18. Okay. 25. Okay. 14. All right. Uh, it does see you barely, <laughs> but you are much further ahead than it for it to be able to get any, like it barely passed the check. So it, it does come towards you, but you're all able to get into the tunnel to lead into the throne room. Uh, uh, Astrox sees everybody going in and goes, oh, we're not fighting it? Uh, I mean, that's probably the smart decision, but I think I could have taken it. <laughs> I mean, if it was like a shark with meat on it, then, you know, I'd be afraid. Because obviously, if it's a bone shark, it already died once, so how good could it be at staying alive, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a what? Yeah. It's like a bone I was shark. trying not to let her know that part because it seemed like it would upset her. Oh, why? Because it's <laughs> upsetting her now. Do you think we could go back and set it free? Uh, I don't know if it was... From its eternal swim of doom? It was probably doom? more like rock than animal. <laughs> Maybe okay. after we do this and then also save the world. We yeah. yeah, 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 hey. absolutely. Let's let's focus on saving uh, Odexia, Odex Odexies first. We, we can murder yeah. the bone shark on the way out. That's or right. just set it free so that it's no longer uh, undead. <laughs> Well, the really? thing is, I'm pretty sure the god of the land of the dead is exactly who's controlling it. So if we kill it and it goes back to the land of the dead, it's just going to be like a vicious. We'll, okay. uh, we'll, we'll set it free. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> It'll live a beautiful It's actually probably not its own soul anyway. It's, okay, yeah, we'll set it free. Got it. Okay. 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 Um, you are now going through, this is sort of like a back entrance into the throne room. Um, this is sort of, you know, the the way that you could get in as uh, it was mostly uh, defended by, you know, or, or it was mostly open space, but this was a good back entrance into the throne room. Oh, I and know all as, about the back entrance of this throne room. <laughs> that's right. And that's probably why you know about it. And as you come through, you run into two of the palace guards who are huddled off to a side. And they, they say in Triton, Halt, who goes there? It's me. Are you, are you, are you one of them? No, I'm, I'm me. I'm here to save, I'm here to save Adexus. Thank God. How did you get in? The door, the puzzle, the coins. Oh, the, the, how do you know about the, that? How do you know about that? It actually wasn't that hard, to be honest with you. Like, right, but I'm, I mean, I yeah, but it's like, how did you know? Oh, probably because when you, yeah, that makes sense. Um, no, I never did it before. We actually just found it. It was actually super easy for us to solve. Oh well, we should get that security changed then, probably. Yeah, that's the that's the primary concern. Where's my son right now? So. Um, what happened here? Yeah, I can. It, so we 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 were overwhelmed by invading forces of the dead, and we were taken by surprise. And only, as far as I'm aware, only us two survived. And some some massive undead is trying to crack open the clamshell to get at the to get at the prince. Um, and uh, I, I don't know what happened to the king. I don't know what happened to anyone else in the town. I know what happened to the king. 
Uh, Odexus is your king now. Well, well uh, Odexus was the king before. Well, like, he was already the king for like 10 years. What happened to Palamon before that? Oh, I'm sorry. Palamon was the. Yeah, you're right. I messed up the names. Yeah. Rewind the conversation just a little Rewind bit. Rewind the conversation. <laughs> well, these guards do not know their own <laughs> name. Boy, yeah. what are they teaching these guards these days? So he's, he's the king now. Okay. So you have done a great service keeping your king safe. Thassa will smile upon you for this duty. Now, what is the creature attacking the clamshell? It looked like some massive undead. It was hulking and huge. It had... Uh, just it had one hand that looked like it had a a, a cudgel um, and it was trying to break into the clamshell. I know who it is. It's an old friend of ours. Oh. What are they saying? Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I, I, I forgot this was happening in Triton. Um, I... I share the entire conversation with them in common that that, that was just shared. Sorry. Sorry, Let's I, I forgot that was in Triton. So they will lead you towards the throne room, uh, if you wish. Um, do you want do you want us to hang back? What 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 should we do? It's up to you if you want to fight for your country or fight for your city. I mean I will. I'll fight for. I'll fight for the king. Fight for the. I'll fight for Calchas. This is the. This is the way. Do you need? Do you need any preparation? Do you need any help before you go in? Um. Lydia, do you still need any sort of healing? Do you have any sort of potions of healing that my friends could have in case they need them? I. We've taken all of the the potions that we had. We. I was badly injured in the onslaught. This is, right, this is right. what we have. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay right now. There is a there is a place that is hidden that you can rest if you need rest, but that's about as best as we can offer. Um, I don't think we really need a rest, not for long enough to I don't think that we could let rest as long as we would need to to get ourselves ready for something more intense. Well, this is the this is the entry. We all ready to go? Ready. We're ready. I'm ready. I get my I get my my bident out and I, I like tap it down on the ground and I go, let's do this. Okay. Astrock pulls out his javelin and is like, Hey, if I do the electric thing with this, is it just oh. gonna kill all of us? Hmm. Mm. Magical Look. electricity. We'll say that it won't. <laughs> Astaroth goes, yeah. hmm, only one way to find out. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. It would be real rough being a Tempest, a Tempest cleric underwater if that was the case. Yeah, oh, guys. You all can enter the throne room. Uh, and it is relatively well lit in here. Um, the throne room has uh, long been a place of beauty. And... Um, serene, serenity. There are huge urchins and uh, anemones that surround the throne room. And at the center, there is a throne, and behind the throne is a massive clamshell. And it looks like there is a huge, hulking undead that is trying to pry the clamshell open with its hands. Surrounding the giant that is prying open the clamshell, you can hear the voices around the room of three women who are cheering it on. You can't see them, yep. but you recognize oh, the voices. Gosh. They are hidden in the darkness somewhere. Standing guard in front of this hulking figure, there are centuries of the returned standing at attention waiting for orders and pulling open the clamshell, you can see the tattered clothes. You can see the peg leg, the clawed yeah. hand of a former friend of yours. 
that was sent to the depths. Loose term. Yeah, loose term. Acquaintance. It was sent to the depths some time ago. Hey, didn't we kill that guy? Yeah, and we're going to do it again. Ugh. Hate it when that stuff doesn't stick. Uh, it does not appear as if they've noticed you yet. No time. Should I just, just, you think? Like last time? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is, is there any value in talking to this guy? Uh, he was kind of a dick when he was alive, but I don't imagine that's gotten any better now. He's trying to kill my son. Sure, sure, but... And it's being controlled probably by Erebos. Uh, look, I'm just saying, usually I'm the guy who's saying we should attack things. And then everyone's like, no, Astro, don't attack things. We need to talk our way through it. So we come into this situation, and I was like, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. Let's Wait, talk but our I way don't believe it. that I have ever told you we should talk our way through something. Okay, maybe not you specifically, but it happens a lot. It does happen a lot. The, well, that's the, silly. The giant that is prying open the clamshell lifts its head up and slowly turns towards you all oh, as see, if it could we... hear you. We had a chance. And We're we whispering. It, it, is, it also has the vigilant feet or the vigilant trait. Um, so it turns around and looks out into the darkness and it says, who goes there? Announce yourselves in the throne room. <laughs> yeah, we all yell. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but cats, just loose just cats underwater. You know, underwater. underwater cats. I'm gonna swim forward the sixty <laughs> feet fish. that my that my speed allows me to with my 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 bite ends. Uh huh. Uh, and so that puts me. He knows we're here, so that's yep. what it is. So I think I get to be about here is where it was. So I'm going to swim to there and I'm going to I'm going to look at him and I'm going to go You ready for a rematch? Oh. Oh, it's my old friend Captain Sophia. I've been looking forward it's still to Sophia. seeing Sophia. Just it's it's still even though you're dead, you can say it right. It's Sophia. So, Sophia. 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 It's my accent. Hmm. Sophia. Good to see you. And as you uh, look upon his face, it is dragged and dead, and there's holes in his cheeks. And you also notice that the eye patch that he jauntily wears above his eye no longer bears the symbol of Crufix. Instead, it bears the symbol of Erebos. Long time a new no puller. see. Well, he made a bitter offer. One that involved me getting some amount of revenge. And which part of it involves the three women that are controlling you and kind of just like taking away all of your own free will and making you a puppet for them to dance with? They don't control me. That's I... not what they said. That's what that is. They, they, they literally said exactly the opposite of that. That was like they like bragged about it when I killed you last time. Don't try to pull strings, Captain. And they will emerge from the from the darkness, one in each of these directions. And they speak in unison, but alternating sentences. We know the tricks you're trying to pull. We've seen them before. And then another one speaks and says, we know that you're the one who's who was going to come here. We called you here specifically. He is, of course, able to make his own decisions. It just so happens that we all want the same thing. That's we all convenient. want you dead. Hey, remember last time when like we almost killed you and you guys ran away because you were scared of us? We've only gotten stronger. Round two, baby. <clears throat> so have we. And I think that the will cut before we roll initiative for this week's episode and we'll be back for the finale next week. All right. right. All right. Oh, every ounce of restraint that I had to just not fire off a lightning bolt to him yeah. while we were talking. I knew I, like, I, no, I, 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 I couldn't drag out the talk any longer. 
Um, so we gotta we gotta cut it there so that we don't get right, to it. The, the the right spell to start things off with isn't uh, lightning bolt. You gotta hit him in the head with a shatter. <laughs> start it off. Oh like yeah, we, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So we'll we'll start <laughs> things off with initiative next week, so you can do your battle planning. All you've right. also got you you'll we'll also decide who your two guards are one assumes they're you know tritons um i hope so otherwise they are in trouble because they, <laughs> yeah. they have been for a while Some triton guards um any other questions before we cut away to the outro great we i'm excited i'm excited for next week this is gonna be fun thank you so much for joining us everybody this was a lovely time uh i we had some uh some interesting things happen this episode and i'm so glad you could join us um, tell the folks where they can follow you. Starting with Jordan, thank you so much for being able to to jump in uh, yeah. on such a busy day. Sorry, really um, appreciate sorry it for only being here for like thirty ish minutes, but uh, but I'm here. Hi everybody, my name is Jordan Pigeon. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon, and uh, to see we we've been uh, at the command zone. We've been releasing uh, these trailers for the new Strixhaven uh, colleges all the time and uh the last one is coming out tomorrow so keep an eye out come watch those it's really exciting and uh yeah why would they watch any other ones when the quandrix is already out there the quandrix right. one was pretty good <laughs> oh. uh hey everybody i'm riley silverman you can find me on twitter at riley j silverman or on instagram at riley silverman and i think this week i'm going to push again my show coming up for jasper's game week it's going to be the week the monday after the finale so it'll be may 3rd third i think is that it's the first monday in may so either the second or the third uh around the same time as our show normally is so it'll be a good spot to watch that on um and i i, I don't know if the auctions the tables are still available for my show or not or if they just ended but if you hmm. check out gasper's game day their site and go to their auctions you'll see if it's still available we had some pretty good bids on my game so i'm excited and uh, for those of you who don't know, Jasper's Game Week is, is uses uses D and D and other gaming systems to raise money uh, to prevent for suicide prevention. So it's a cause that is really noble and great, and I think something we all can believe is is, is worthwhile. And so I'll be excited to be part of that. And so that will be my thing this week. Awesome. Hi, I'm Danielle Radford. I uh, was Lydia. You can find me. I just at Danielle Radford on Twitter. You can find me at Danielle underscore Radford on Instagram. I'm one of the writers of the Honest Trailers. Um, if you're watching, I feel like I, yeah, tomorrow's a holiday. Maybe we'll celebrate. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, thanks so much. And that's where you can find me. Hey everyone, I'm Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as Rar. It's Ashlyn, uh, where I do almost daily video now videos now of my wonderful mystery snail tanks uh, which yeah. i love dearly um, and uh, if you ever want to listen to my voiceovers because i do a lot of voice acting uh, you can go to my website which is ashlynrose.com i actually have an animation coming out next month which i'm very excited to share with you hopefully soon i recorded it last year and it's finally coming out so i'm very very excited and uh, yeah wow. that's where you can find all my stuff so yeah cool how is how is the snail that crawled out of your tank and cracked its shell doing? She's doing great, actually. She just laid some eggs the other day, and oh. she's not she's kicking oh, it like good. nothing okay. happened to her. So yeah, good. she's good. Thanks for asking. She's doing she's doing okay. Yeah, she's great. The eggshell the eggshell uh, treatment worked. works great. Awesome. Worked like a That's charm. Awesome. awesome. I'm, I I love <laughs> watching snail videos. There, I oh, almost great. made I almost made a flail snail combat just because I thought that that would be funny, but I didn't. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> hi everybody, I'm the I'm the internet's Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. Thank you all so much for tuning in, uh, and we'll see you next week for this season finale of The Broken Pact. Good night, everybody.